Well, hello from me, Dr. Pete Melville Shreve. I'm going to be running through exploring smart rainwater management systems in a small island economy. I'd like to highlight my co authors. And underway we go. And so, the aim of the project uh, was to work with Southwest Water, and it's a, it's a water, water everywhere type project. Uh, and on the Isles of Scillies, off the tip of mainland Britain in the southwest, uh, there's a granite geology, and the island currently relies upon boreholes. And with water, water everywhere, there is even a desalination plant. And through this project, we were tasked with exploring the possibilities of reusing rainwater on the island. So the key challenges faced are around these three items. Firstly, what can smart rainwater management systems offer? And I'll cover what they look like in a moment. Do they behave as they should? Is it feasible to install them in the Isles of Scillies? And as you can see in this image here, when we sent the installation team across, uh, they weren't allowed to take a van and they were allowed a trundler. So it's a challenging place to get anything done. So the rainwater management system as it stands, this is our beyond rainwater harvesting image here. And uh, top right hand corner, we will now quickly run through the logging arrangement. So essentially we've got an internet enabled rainwater system here. We've got an 800 litre tank in this image, the pumps in the tank, and we've got two flow sensors telling us in real time uh, what drinking water has been put into the rain tank when it's depleted and what the supply of water to the household has been. And the households were all plumbed in with their toilets on these systems. We also gather real-time data from two temperature sensors in the ambient air and in the rain tank itself. And we constantly monitor the water level within the rain tank. Now, finally, the thing that makes it uh, a smart system is its ability to not just data log, but also manage itself. So we can release rainwater when we project there are storms, but we can also top it up with mains drinking water. So the three things that we're looking at is, can we displace water demand? Can we control the stormwater discharges? And can we get them to refill overnight? Because we know that there's high pressure in the drinking water system overnight and low demand. And so by refilling the systems overnight, we can access the available water from the desalination plant. So in terms of trialing, uh, it was agreed that we would install the first eight of these systems in Exeter, as the real goal here was to demonstrate the feasibility of installing these small scale retrofitable systems and to demonstrate their functionality. And uh, they were installed at a couple of existing rainwater tanks that were in Exeter, including one below ground, and they were each configured to make sure that they were linked to a platform that could drain them prior to storms so that they could maximize stormwater capture. And each of the tanks uh, could also be remotely filled with mains water and their systems, the systems themselves were remotely monitored uh, with a dashboard platform. Now a modeling study was also conducted um, and I won't go into too much detail here, uh, but we essentially ran a modeling study assuming we installed these systems across a hundred of the uh, circa 1000 properties on St. Mary's, which is the largest island in the Isles of Scillies. And there's around about 2000 population in the winter it escalates to 4,000 population in the summer, so a challenging place to provide uh, drinking water services. I forgot to mention at the start, Southwest Water have recently taken on the drinking water services for the Isles of Scillies. And we've used uh, an approach we've been using for a number of years now, which is a mass balance modeling approach. It's a yield after spill, uh, and we have a little bit of software that we refer to as the rain wet, the rainwater harvesting evaluation tool. So in terms of model inputs, it relies upon uh, a suitable time step. In this instance, we've used a daily time step across a 20 year rainfall profile. We have a daily toilet demand for each property, uh, which is the demand on the tank. And we need to know the roof runoff area and a suitable coefficient. So these next few slides all look the same and will demonstrate modeled outputs. So here we have a year's worth of modeled rainwater arriving at an 800 litre tank in the Isles of Scillies, and it's the year 2013. And what we can see is that the red line demonstrates a simulated rainwater runoff, 
and I'll highlight up here that the total rain for the year was 40,000 litres available from the roof and obviously with, uh, sorry I didn't get this right, there is no rainwater harvesting tank on this one. Uh, with no rainwater harvesting tank the demand met is therefore zero. So if we now add a litre tank to this and run the same simulation then we'll have this blue line at the bottom of the video is the simulated water level in the tank throughout the course of the year and you can see that there are gaps here so we know that during some dry spells there's not enough water and there are also spells in the winter where the tank's full and it's raining more and we're getting these red lines which are spills and I'll highlight back up here top right that the rainwater demand met uh, is now up to uh, 21,000 litres per annum now this is just one of the houses we looked at in one year we looked at 20 years we looked at 100 different houses including some census data. So I tried to simplify this for a short video here today. Now next, it's exactly the same system, but now we're allowing the rainwater system to request drinking water. And it's allowed to request drinking water during the overnight hours. Uh, and we now have this additional purple line down here. And throughout the year, there are periods where the rainwater tank is asking for a small quantity of drinking water to be put into it. And over the course of that year, we can see that there are actually 146 days modelled here where it needs some, some drinking water and a total of 11,000 litres is drawn. OK, so we've got some results based on these modelled data and uh, across a, an average property, it was around about a 20,000 litre per annum per house uh, saving uh, based on uh, this 800 litre tank concept, which is this above ground retrofitable one that we were exploring. And now I'm also going to look at some of the operational results uh, or monitoring results and the control system performance. So um, uh, the the systems performed well across, across the 10 months. I haven't got the 12 months of data to report on uh, in this presentation, but there is a 12 month study uh, that was being completed, slightly impacted by recent events. And uh, very interestingly, the nighttime mains top ups, when we look at, um, at the data here, I'm just looking at one of the systems. We've only got two on St. Mary's. But when I looked up the data for this, uh, it showed us that only 35 litres of mains water was drawn during daytime hours. Um, it's got some fallback systems in place to make sure that if you do click flush and the tank needs water, it will give it to you. Um, but it meant that uh, across 260 days, even though we had very dry spells, we never had the rainwater tanks drawing uh, mains water apart from a total of um, throughout the project to the point of that data. Okay and I flagged here as we move on to this next slide that we're out of modeling land and into monitoring land. So blue line here is monitored level depth and this is one minute data uh, collected throughout the course of the project and as you can see uh, this nice steady gradient and you can find it throughout much of the year and we can see the steady gradient telling us they have a steady demand profile. So it's useful in helping us uh, make assumptions about the, uh, the usage of the water at the property. We can also see when there's heavy rainfall and we get a steep fill and it's corresponding with the uh, rainfall hiatus graph at the top here. And we can see events where we've drained the tank down prior to the storm uh, and then the storm has filled it right back up again as one would project. And then there's this nice spell here where the tank is near its, um, its empty level and it's filling and emptying each day uh, with these mains water top ups. And we can see from the data that each of those is occurring. So to draw around to conclusions, uh, we can conclude uh, that the data that we've collected in the project actually gives us nice demand profiles, albeit just for the uh, toilet use and the, uh, the flushing. But uh, we can use this to iteratively improve how the system performs if we're looking to target certain things. Now there was this key finding really is that in the periods without rain we did manage to I believe for the first time successfully implement this control philosophy that meant that we were topping up our rainwater tanks at times when there was capacity in the water network. And finally um, this is a more holistic one, that offsetting potable water demand in this location could be an effective means to reduce the total carbon footprint. 
Uh, I'd like to flag in my co-authors, Sam Dickinson, Hussein Rosé and Ben Ward. Uh, and please do get in touch if you'd like to know any more. Thanks so much.